Welcome, in this video I'm going to go over the procedure to use this cheap HDMI capture card with a Raspberry Pi 4. So this is my second video on the topic. In my previous video I wasn't able to get this to work, but I have it working now. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'm on my tech bench here, and I've been doing a build series on this, and I have a little bit of a rat's nest here, but I'm going to go over each of the parts and how they all plug in together. So I have a Raspberry Pi 4 here. That's hooked up to a monitor here, and that's this monitor on the right. And then plugged into the USB, I have a keyboard and mouse. So this is the mouse, the keyboard is under it, and I'm booting from a Samsung bar flash drive. So that's this here, and then this other one is my HDMI capture. So that's the Raspberry Pi setup. So now moving on to my device that I want to capture on. This is a Nintendo Switch, and coming out the back here we have power and HDMI. So this is the HDMI that would normally go to your TV, and that's going into the splitter here. And I have this in the description too. So this is the input of the splitter. This other cable is going to USB power. This is a charger, so that just powers the splitter. Then from the splitter we have one side going off here to a monitor. So what that's doing is it's passing HDMI from here to here so I can play it on this monitor. When we're capturing on the Raspberry Pi, I won't be able to see it on the Raspberry Pi. Then this other one here, so this comes in here, it goes off to the monitor, it goes to this HDMI, and that goes around here to this capture card. So that's all the hardware I'm using. Now we'll switch over to the Raspberry Pi and we'll get into the software. Okay, so I have the Raspberry Pi up and running, and I'm using the latest version as of December 2020. And this version uses Pulse Audio as opposed to ALSA for its audio capabilities. So I tried doing this on a Raspberry Pi 3, and I had partial success there. It dropped a few frames, and I wasn't able to re-encode it for some reason. But I think this is best run on a Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm using the 4GB model. And this is the regular desktop version, it's not the full desktop, nor is it the light version. So I installed this, I did the initial configuration, and then I did the updates on it. So I have a terminal up here. And I also have my website up, and I'll put a link in the description to my notes on this video where you can find the commands I'm typing in here. And I'm actually going to skip over this first one. This installs v4l, which is video for Linux, and that's already installed on this build of Raspberry Pi OS. But if this second command here doesn't run, then you can install v4l. So I'm going to run this next command. I'll copy it here and paste it into my terminal. And this will tell me the video devices. So you see here it says USB video and I have dev video zero and dev video one. This is the one I want right here is dev video zero. This list modes command, I'll copy it. I'll paste it in here. And this will list all the recording modes that I have available on this USB capture device. So you can see here we have the compressed version as motion JPEG and the raw is YUYV422. So I'll be using the Motion JPEG version in this video. Then these are all the resolutions you can capture at. So the two I'm going to focus on in this video are 1080p, which is the first one listed here, and then 720p, which is here. So these capture cards, when you buy them, it may seem like they can maybe do 1080p at 60fps, but I have not been able to get them to do that. The max you can do from this, from my experience, is 1080p at 30 frames per second, or 720p at 60 frames per second. And I'll put a link below to my audio video playlist where you can find my other videos that I've done on this capture card. And I've gone into more detail on which modes are available on these. So this is different from the last video here. This list pulse audio sources. So I'll copy this. I'll paste that in here. So these are the different devices here. And you can see there's an asterisk next to the first one. And that says macro silicon USB video. And that is our USB capture device. And then we have these two others here. So that star means it's a default device. So we'll just use the word default to reference it. If it's not your default device, you can actually just copy this string here and use this in place of where I use default in my command I'm going to have here in just a little bit. So as I just stated, you can do 1080p at 30 FPS or 720p at 60 FPS. So I have two commands here, one for each resolution. I'm going to use the 720p version in my examples here. So I have two commands here for whichever resolution you want to use. And these are to display video on your Raspberry Pi. So I don't know of a way that you can actually display the video on the Raspberry Pi while you're recording it and have any good performance. So that's why I use that HDMI splitter. But you can view it on the screen just to test it out. So we use the FF play command for that. And then we have dash F 
v4l2, and that's video for Linux 2, and then dash input format is mjpeg. So when we looked at that earlier, we had the two different types. We had motion jpeg, let's see if I can get that back up. We had MJPEG and YUYV422. You could use either of those in place of this input format. Then we have our video size is 1920 by 1080, and that also came from here. And the frame rate is 30. And this doesn't reference the frame rate on here, but when I've run similar commands on Windows or Mac, it shows me the frame rate. So that's why I know that you can do 30 FPS at 1080p. And then dash I, dev video zero, that is our video device. So I'm going to run this command here and we'll see the Nintendo Switch screen come up. Okay, so here's the screen. I'm going to press the shoulder buttons on here. I'll hit A to show that I'm ready. And here we have the Nintendo Switch screen. So I can actually hit F here and it will make it full screen. So I can get up and move around on this. And it looks pretty good on the screen, but I can see both my monitors next to each other. And there's definitely a lot of lag in this. But that shows me that the video source is working. So I can hit Q to exit out of this. Next, we'll test the audio. And that's this command here. And you can see the format here is Pulse and then the input is default. And this is where I was talking earlier that you can copy that whole line out and paste it in here if necessary. So we'll copy this, paste it in here, we'll hit enter. And now we'll hear audio through my Raspberry Pi's audio output, which is this monitor that I'm using. And I don't think it's going to come through on this microphone, but I can hear it now. So I'll hit Q to exit out of that. So I have the audio and the video working, I've confirmed that. Now I want to capture it. So I have two commands here, one for capturing at 1080p and the other at 720p. And I will update this before I post it, because this is incorrect here, this should say 720p. So I will copy this command, and I will paste it down here. So what we have here is we're running FFmpeg, we're saying the format is v4l2, and then we want to put thread queue size 1024. And I found this in a forum online from people that are having a similar problem to me, and they said add this in here. And it seems to work with this in here, so I'm going to leave it in there. Then we have our input format is mjpeg, the video size is 720p, so we have the frame rate is 60, and then the input is dev video 0. Now we have the second input, so we have dash f for the format, and that's pulse, and then we have this thread queue size again is 1024, and then the input is default. Next we have dash codec copy. So what this is doing is this is going to pull those streams off of that capture card and it's going to dump it to this video and it's an AVI video. So an AVI video is kind of a container for other media types. So I've just named this vid underscore 720p underscore 60 dot AVI. So I will hit enter here and then I'll play a little of the game and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, I want to finish capturing so I'll just hit Q to stop this. I'll clear my screen. I'll type ls space dash lh, and we can see here's the file that I recorded. It's 1.8 gigabytes. I can type ff probe here and then put the name of the file in. This will give us a little bit more information. It says we did 4 minutes 11 seconds. We have motion JPEG here. We have 720p. We have 58k bitrate. It says 120 FPS. I'm not sure what that is. That should be 60. I'm not sure why it says 120. And then we have our audio down below here. So I can try to play this here. I don't know if this is going to work very well. So I just type FF playing the name of the file. And it's kind of working right now. I do have my screen currently set to 720p resolution, so that might be helping that I'm not trying to play this back at 1080p. But ultimately, you're probably going to want this as an MP4 file. So I have a command here, and I have this set up to use hardware encoding, but it doesn't seem to really speed it up a lot, but I'll run this anyway. So what we have here is ffmpeg-i, and then we have the name of the file we just recorded, and then we have vcodec is h264 underscore omx. So this is going to use the hardware encoder, and then we have a codec is aac, and you can tweak these settings more than I have here. And then I have the bitrate is 9500k. You could certainly make that a lot smaller. And then the PIX format is yuv420p, and then the output file is vid.mp4. So this will take a little while to run, so I'm obviously going to speed the video up here, and we'll take a look when it's done. That completed, so I'll clear my screen. So I'll type ls space dash lh here, and we can see the file, we have this vid.mp4. So our original file was 1.8 gigabytes, and now we have a 282 megabyte file. So if we want to play that, we can type ff play vid.mp4, and that will play the file. 
Okay. So if you want to play it with hardware decoding, you can type OMX player and then the name of the file. So this should give you a good frame rate here. So I'm going to take this video and I'll merge some clips of it in here so you can see the native recording of it. I'll also do a recording at 1080p and I'll put that in here too and I'll label both of them so you can see both. Obviously you need to be viewing the video at 1080p to see the 1080p resolution. Okay, so that's how you can capture HDMI on a Raspberry Pi using a cheap USB adapter. And that adapter seems to get sold out every once in a while on Amazon, and I also have a link to eBay, so you can buy it either one of those places. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.